This video will discuss temperature composition diagrams for binary mixtures of liquid solutions. Alright, so we have our total vapor pressure of the system that we looked at from previous videos. We looked at these as a function of the mole fraction of component 1 of, of our two component mixture in the liquid phase and our mole fraction of component 1 in the gas phase. We saw that the total vapor pressure of the system is equal to the vapor pressure of pure liquid 2 minus the mole fraction of component 1 in the liquid phase times the difference in the v pure vapor pressures of pure liquids 1 and 2, P2 star minus P1 star. We saw something different if we express this in terms of the mole fraction of component 1 in the vapor. If if component 1 had a higher uh, vapor pressure, then it is the more volatile component, and the gas should have a higher mole fraction of 1 than the liquid does. So what we saw there is that the total vapor pressure is equal to the vapor pressure of pure liquid 2 plus 1 over, notice there's a to the minus 1 power here, 1 over 1 plus chi 1g, the mole fraction of component 1 in the gas, divided by P1 star, times P2 star minus P1 star. Okay, and we both we also know that vapor pressures of liquids vary with temperature because the boiling point of a liquid is where the vapor pressure equals the external pressure. So the vapor pressure of liquid pure liquid 1 and the vapor pressure of pure liquid 2 vary with temperature. And the vapor pressure of of, as I said, a pure component I at its at the uh, boiling point or the vaporization temperature of that pure component is equal to the external pressure at that point. Okay, so if we have the temperature as a value which is less than the minimum of the uh, boiling points of each of the pure liquids, then what we're going to have is only a liquid phase or primarily just a liquid phase of the two. If the temperature is greater than the mixture of is greater than the maximum uh, pure, uh, sorry, greater than the maximum vaporization temperature of each of the pure liquids, then we'll only have gas. So at very high temperatures, we only have gas. Very low temperatures, we only have liquid. But if we're in between, we can have some mixture of gas and liquid, depending on the total mole fraction of of component one and component two. Okay, and if we said, as I, if we have, as I said, the boiling point of liquid one, pure liquid one is lower than the boiling point of pure liquid two, then the mole fraction of liquid one in the gas is going to be greater than the mole fraction of liquid one in the liquid. So what we can use uh, based off of the varying boiling points of these two liquids in the solution is we can describe the basis, the physical basis of why distillation is possible. And this is all, of course, assuming that we have ideal solutions at every single mole fraction. Okay, so we're going to start with a mixture of two liquids where the mole fraction of liquid 1 is some non-zero and non-one value. So being a mixture, liquid 1 is in the solution, but it's not the entire solution. So for example, as I have it drawn here, this is about, uh, chi 1 is about 0 0.3, or it's about 30% liquid uh, component 1. We're going to heat to about the vaporization temperature. So we're going to have a, T, a temperature which is greater than the uh, temperature of pure liquid 1. We're going to collect the vapor that results at that temperature. So at this temperature here, we have the uh, mole fraction in the liquid is about 0.3, but the mole fraction in the vapor is about 0.85. So we're going to heat up to this temperature and collect the vapor that we get as a result. We're going to condense that vapor back down into liquid. So now it's liquid which is more enriched with component 1. So this is now uh, chi 1L step, uh, step 1. And then we're going to take that and we're going to heat it up again and it's going to boil and we'll collect the vapor, which is now even further enriched with component one, about 98% say here, condense that liquid and then repeat 
n times until we have a sufficiently high mole fraction of component 1 or until it approaches a pure solution of the more volatile component. So because of the varying uh, vapor pressures of the two liquids, they have different boiling points. Because of those different boiling points, there's a different equilibrium mole fraction of component 1 in the vapor and in the liquid. And because of this, we can uh, repeatedly evaporate part of the solution, collect the liquid, uh, sorry, collect the vapor, uh, condense it, evaporate it again, and repeat until we have isolated the more volatile component using the procedure called distillation.